It's that time of the year for footballers to get into the best shape and head into preseason. Many players are hitting the gym and training like an athlete with a good program hitting all aspects of power, strength, speed, agility, injury prevention, and fitness. Some are using great programs while others are utilizing non-athlete training programs, meaning some will enter preseason more prepared than others. For today's video, we will cover fitness and how to ensure you come back one of, if not the fittest player on your team. We will talk about specific drills, testing norms, and scheduling. With the hundreds of ways to perform fitness, it's hard to determine the best methods. With the help of research, my knowledge and experience, and experience from top professionals in the field, I will be providing you with the ultimate guide to match fitness. In the past, and even sometimes today, it still occurs, players would run three to five miles, hoping that would get them in shape for their game and to an extent, it will improve their aerobic capacity. However, does that actually help them prepare for the demands of the game, and is there a better method for it? Research shows us that footballers typically run between 9 to 14 kilometers or 5 to 9 miles during a 90-minute game at different intensities like you see here. Note that distances covered across a football match at high intensities might also vary according to players' league, level, and age. Amateur players have been reported to perform less periods of high-intensity running than professional players. Footballers more than ever before are beginning to understand match fitness is much more than just running 20 to 25 miles a week. After all, a match highly taxes both the anaerobic and aerobic energy systems. And with the game continuing to evolve, like you see from research, players are needing to cover more distances at higher intensities. At minimum, it should be the athlete's goal to ensure when they come into preseason, they can pass their fitness tests. In the college setting, that's going to be the biggest thing your coaches will want to look at because that will tell them a lot about you. Once you pass that test, preseason itself will contain a lot more running, probably more on the anaerobic side such as repeated sprints giving you a chance to improve or maintain what you prepared for in the offseason. More on fitness test requirements later. The following fitness drills were created to improve that aerobic capacity at higher heart rate zones. The focus is to ensure that players pass their fitness test come preseason. And note that these fitness drills are done alongside everything that falls under the performance category of speed, plyometrics, power, strength training, and all that good stuff. All right, team, so here are all the fitness drills you will ever need. Maybe everything you see in blue is going to hit that aerobic zone, and everything that you see in red is going to hit more of that anaerobic zone. Let's begin with the 4x4 four four fitness drill. You can do this one one of two ways. You can begin by setting up this layout like I created right here, which I got from a study. What you want to do is run hard for 90 to 95% of your max heart rate for four minutes. The way that you calculate that is the formula that you see right here. And a common thing I get is how is that possible? Guys, it is very much possible. All my athletes do it. Try it first and then get back to me. The second way that you can do it is to just go to a park, hit the track and hit one kilometer. So you're running hard and your goal is to hit one kilometer in that four minute rep, which is also 0.62 miles. So if you do not get it the first time, guys, no biggie, keep working for it. So you got four minutes followed by three minutes of rest. And we are gonna do that for four times. In that three minute rest, you wanna keep your heart rate at 60% or begin with a slow walk and then progress to a light jog throughout those three minutes and then begin the next rep from there. And up next is the two minute on, one minute off for eight reps. The goal is to run hard and cover as much distance as possible in these two minutes. Tom Noon recommends 500 to 600 meters per run. The one minute off should be a very light jog, which is an active recovery. And the third aerobic drill is the two kilometer run three times, which is 1.25 miles. According to Tom Noon, running hard for two kilometers, aiming for eight to nine minutes per rep at three minutes rest between sets is the best way to go. So by now, maybe you're wondering why and how are these fitness drills so good and different from the rest? For one, they help build that aerobic base in an interval fashion to also help improve anaerobic endurance, allowing you to cover more distance in the same amount of time in comparison if you were running three miles straight. In one study, the 4x4 actually improved the 300-yard shuttle time significantly in eight weeks for the first team players of the Croatian national team, like you can see in this study right here. 
Now, will these drills help and prepare you 100% for the demands of the game? What it will do is help with your ability to last in a match and recover much more quickly and efficiently from repeated sprints. And that leads me to the next topic, anaerobic fitness. These are typically the drills that we think of when we say match specific fitness. Now the first drill from the red section or the anaerobic section is one that you have probably seen if you've been with me for a while now, which is the 40 meter shuttle. You may have seen it in my match fitness video, which is an outdated fitness video. For this one, we're gonna sprint 10 yards and back, 20 yards and back, 30 yards and back, 40 yards and back. We have a 30 second rest. We do that for three times and that is set number one. You're gonna do anything from two to four sets. In between each set, you rest for two minutes. This is one of my all time favorite ones and the one I get the most complaints from, from a how difficult it is. Athletes usually tell me how horrible this drill was. This one is great because it will improve that repeated sprint ability with longer sprints and it will also help with that aerobic system to a certain extent. And I must note all fitness drills will intertwine and help with both energy systems, but one system is relied on more depending on the drill. Anyway, shuttles are great because you also get a change of directional stimulus needed for matches. Make sure you cut evenly on both sides. When performing each rep, try to get each rep under 40 seconds and we measure this in yards not meters all right team the second anaerobic drill is going to be the 300 yard shuttle so this drill can be done in two ways the most common way is when you sprint 25 yards and back for six times which equals 300 yards so that means 25 and back 25 and back 25 and back that's six times again 300 yards typically if you can get it under 60 seconds, it means you're in decent shape. However, the Croatian national team, like we saw in the research where they did the aerobic 4x4, the Croatian national team was able to complete the 300-yard shuttle between 55 and 56 seconds. However, the only thing that wasn't clarified was if they did it in the 25 yards and back or if they did it the second way, which is 50 yards and back. All right, so there's two ways that you can perform this drill. Personally, if you want to get more of that change of directional work because you aren't getting that enough in your solo training and your team training, whatever the case is, I would go for the 25 yards and back. But if you're getting enough, do the 50 yards and back. And that is three times. You're going to do this one between four and six sets. The last one here in the anaerobic zone, one that you have already seen in my videos, if you have been with me for a while and typically done more in season is the 50 yards and back is the half gasser, which you spread 50 yards and back and you rest between 30 and 45 seconds ish. You do this for six times, rest two minutes and you repeat two times. This one, we can even go a little bit more volume if needed. Again, this is one that I typically don't use in the off season. I like to stick between the 40 yard shuttles and the 300 yard shuttles for that more specific football repeated sprints. But again, it's always good to have something else in your tool bag if you don't wanna get as many change of directional work in, but you still want that quick repeated sprint effect. Now I'm going to show you how you can fit it into your schedule so you can organize things accordingly so you don't overdo it and so you don't underdo it as well. I want you to follow these next guidelines. How many times a week and at what part of the off season should I do these drills? This is one I got from a certain book, which I could not find the source, so I apologize to the author. With that said, I feel like this is too confusing for the average individual, so I created my own. I think this is a great way to simplify training. You will have to modify this according to your time of season. The further you are away from season, the more focus we put on the aerobic system. And the closer we get to preseason and in season, the more we rely on the anaerobic zone. Again, you don't have to follow this exactly like you see here. Instead, use it as a guide. It's important to consider volume when choosing how many sessions and how many sets. I always recommend starting with the minimal sets and progressively increasing sets throughout the weeks. You want to do this because you want the body to adapt to the increase in volume in sprints involving change of direction. The body is amazing because it can handle a lot of volume, but what it does not like and does not appreciate is a sudden ramp up of volume. You will increase your risk of injury, so always keep that in mind and most importantly, listen to your body. You need to consider your game time, how many matches and fitness you're doing with your team. This is why I highly recommend a fitness test early on to know where you lie. If you find you are already in shape and have hit the fitness markers your coach has given you, then all you need to do is maintain. Now, I know a lot of coaches do not provide fitness tests, so I highly recommend you do one of the following. Some of the tests include the yo-yo intermittent recovery test and the 3015. Most of y'all have 
probably already heard of the yo-yo test but what a lot don't know is that there are six different variations to it so we will only be going over the most commonly used test and scores which is number five on the list the yo-yo intermittent recovery test level one now here are some of the norms for both men and women i will leave a link in the description below for the full test data and levels the other most commonly used test is the 3015 intermittent fitness test not as known as the yo-yo test but one being used at the professional and collegiate level right now it measures maximal aerobic power anaerobic speed reserve inter-effort recovery and change of directional abilities they even have a free app with a guide on how to perform it go ahead and check out their website for more information now here is the data based on research which i will also provide links for so you can check out everything in full detail Guys, I truly believe that you have everything you need in this video to help improve that aerobic, anaerobic, and anything fitness related to help you last in the game. Just to kind of give you a little case study that I did with one of my online players, we conducted a yo-yo test and we had this score right here on the screen. After just one month of training, we got him up to this score right here. Now I'm not saying that you're gonna see the same results, but you're gonna see similar results. You're gonna see good gains as long as you stay consistent. That's gonna be the most important thing, guys. Stay consistent with your training. Prioritize your recovery and understand in these case studies, guys, there's always gonna be limitations to it. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, drop a comment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.